Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the microeconomics exam for 2019, set two. This is question number two and it covers the course exam description for unit two, supply and demand. This one is all about excise taxes. Let's get into the question. You get to take 40% of your lunch. And that, Lauren, is how taxes work. This question starts off with a perfectly competitive market for hats, and the government has imposed a per unit tax on those hats. We have to identify the price that consumers will pay as a result of the tax and the quantity of hats that will be sold as a result of the tax. To figure that out, take a look at the graph that has already been drawn for us. Before the tax, we have a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve, and there's an intersection that identifies the quantity and the price that will exist before the tax. As a result of the tax, the supply curve shifts the vertical distance of that tax to the left, giving us a new equilibrium price and quantity. That price and quantity is the price that consumers will pay and the quantity of hats that will be sold. The producers will actually receive a lower price down at P1, but we don't have to identify that here. We're identifying the price at the new equilibrium that is P3 and Q2 being the quantity. You identify both of those and you've got yourself a point here. For the second part of A, we're finding the tax revenue the government brings in as a result of this tax. In order to find that, you look at the new equilibrium, bring that down to the old supply curve, and that gap is the amount of the tax on this good. Bring it to the axes, and that gives us a four-sided shape that is the tax revenue. It is the height of the tax and the base of the quantity sold. If you were asked to calculate that, you would just calculate the area of that shape and it would give us the amount of the tax revenue. Here we only have to identify the shape. So you can do that by looking at the points that are on each of those corners. P1, P3, S, and Z. That is the shape that equals the tax revenue here. And that's your answer. For part B, we have to assume that instead of the downward sloping demand curve we just had, we now have a vertical perfectly inelastic demand curve. And we have to decide what that will do to the price that consumers pay. The way I would figure this out is simply draw in that vertical demand curve and see where the new intersection of the equilibrium is. And that is the price that consumers will pay. The old price was at P3 and the new price is at P4. So that means consumers will be paying a higher price. All you have to do is just say higher and you'll get your point. For the second part of B, we have to explain what the vertical demand curve will do to the tax revenue the government receives if they impose that same excise tax on this good. Well, in order to figure this out, simply sketch it out. There is our new demand curve that's vertical and here is the old tax revenue. With the new vertical demand curve, the quantity it will no longer decrease as a result of the tax. So this is that amount of tax revenue shifted upward, but that is not the total amount of revenue. Because the quantity is now higher than it was before, we have an additional amount of tax revenue that the government brings in by taxing this good. The moral of this story is that governments can bring in more revenue when they tax goods with inelastic demand. So in order to answer this question, you simply say higher because, and that's the explained portion you have to have here, the quantity does not drop like it does with a downward sloping demand curve. And if you show that, I suggest you use the numbers, Q3 is greater than Q2, and that's the reason why we get a higher tax revenue you get your point. For part C, we're looking at the impact of a decrease in the tax on this good and what that will do to the producer surplus. 
just like most of these, when in doubt, graph it out. That's how I would figure this one out. Here is where the producer surplus was with that vertical demand curve at the old amount of the tax. If we reduce the amount of the tax, the amount producers receive for selling this good doesn't actually change because that vertical demand curve shows that the entire tax burden goes on to consumers. The producer has no tax burden when facing a vertical demand curve. And so all you have to do here is say it stays the same because, and there's the explain point here, the price sellers receive doesn't change, nor does the quantity they sell. And you'll get the point. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are definitely on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you want to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe below. Then head over to ReviewEcon.com where there are lots of review activities and games to help you practice the skills you've been learning in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, make sure you head over to ReviewEcon.com and purchase the Total Review Packet with everything you need to know for the AP Microeconomics and Macroeconomics exams. Thank you. I'll see you next time.